Uh, good morning. I am Dr. Ricardo Carrillo, a physician and anatomy professor graduated from the Autonomous University of Baja California, or UABC, at Mexico. And as part of the World Medical Studies Conference, uh, which I hope you are enjoying, I'm presenting the topic. Uh, the benefits of U.S. clinical experience at the beginning of your journey to U.S. physicianship. Uh, hope you like it. I, uh, my journey. I graduated from the medicine faculty of the Autonomous University of Baja California on August 2021. Uh, I started working as a physician doing inpatient weekend night shifts at. Hospital Quirúrgico del Valle in Mexicali, Baja California, Mexico. And a month later, I began to work as an anatomy professor at the university I graduated from, UABC. Uh, to the date, I have done uh, four virtual observerships, three internal medicine ones, and most recently, one in neurology. Uh, currently, I'm studying for step one. Uh, with the goal of matching into a U.S. internal medicine residency program. So actually, I'm working uh, doing inpatient uh, night shifts, uh, being in the academy field as an anatomy professor and studying for sub one. Uh, first, uh, we need to see what is U.S. clinical experience. And it is a structure and supervised learning experience administered by U.S. licensed physicians and institutions. And there are two major types of experiences. Uh, one is hands-on and observerships. Hands-on refers to patient focused clinical exposure, uh, having the opportunity to engage in some form of patient interaction that is not considered uh, the practice of medicine. Uh, this doesn't imply that you are free to function as would a licensed physician in any capacity. And on the other hand, uh, we have observerships. Uh, the observerships refer to a structure and supervised clinical experiences, uh, limiting the visitor to observation of the practice of medicine. Uh, for showing you what benefits uh, US clinical experiences offer as a student or as a physician, I will share you my own experience and in what ways it has contributed to my professional formation. Uh, right here, this one is my first rotation on internal medicine outpatient virtual observership, uh, which I did on June 2021, last year. By that time, I recently had my U.S. visa appointment, and uh, my visa had not arrived yet and the border between Mexico and the U.S. was closed. Uh, so being able to get access to U.S. clinical experience uh, without worrying about traveling was a great relief. Uh, this rotation took place on Soho Health Clinic at New York, uh, which provides a patient center primary care. By the time I took the rotation, uh, New York State was about to reach 70% vaccination rate and approximately 95% of the appointments done at Soho Health Clinic were telehealth appointments. A modality that, honestly, I have never experienced during my school years. And this first experience with telehealth uh, taught me uh, how to take full advantage of technology to provide care remotely. I learned to use new tools uh, that I use daily in my work environment nowadays, uh, both in the clinical field and uh, in the clinical field, I adopt to my practice giving telehealth consultation uh, through platforms as Zoom. And at the same time, domaining this type of platforms was necessary at my work at the university. As a professor, uh, where at some point at the beginning of the year, Almost all classes were given virtually. Making the most of teaching platforms uh, was really a challenge for making classes and virtual activities more attractive to students. Also, uh, this rotation, I learned how to navigate through an electronic health record software uh, that was centered exclusively in the outpatient care. It was a different uh, type of software than the ones I have used before. 
And as someone who is interested in providing primary care uh, attention, uh, knowing how other health record systems work, uh, this offered me another point of view to improve how I use these systems in my daily practice and how to organize my own records to be more productive. Uh, something I learned with the use of these systems is how to write uh, medical, uh, more specifically in English. Uh, normally, every healthcare professional knows how to write a note. Uh, but as is completely different to express yourself in other language, also it's completely different to write a medical note in other language for the first time. Uh, you may think that this is reduced only to the domain of the language or your English proficiency, but many abbreviations, technical language, and descriptions necessary for insurance purposes come into play too. Uh, this rotation uh helped me as a well-guided introduction of how the health system in the u.s works and with that knowledge from this rotation i was more confident uh, with myself about taking any other rotation now we advance in time to september 2021 uh, when my second rotation took place uh this was an internal medicine ward called observership At the University of Miami International Medicine Institute, this rotation start every day with a one hour meeting in which we discuss the new cases and the ones already assigned to our team. It consists of discussing case by case between the attending uh, residents and medical students and us. Uh, new cases require more detailed analysis while the already known cases were discussed in a shorter time, focusing on the current treatment of the patient, his evolution, and probable discharge, uh, depending on the case. This daily activity favored a correct follow-up of the loss of information, and at the same time, uh, we were taught on how to make a verbal representation of a clinical case. After this morning meeting, hospital rounds began. And as a continuation of the previous communication process, uh, we visited each of the patients to interview them one by one. Uh, we were of creating and communicating to them a plan for each of the patients. These two activities uh, were highly complemented with the use of the inpatient electronic health record software. Uh, the benefit of being virtually uh, was that it was wonderful being able to see through a camera the morning meeting, the morning meeting, or uh, be rounding through the hospital on one of your windows, while having on the other one the health records of that patient. And speaking specifically of this system. Uh, we were using the most common software that holds medical records in the majority of U.S. hospitals. Uh, that is the one that you are seeing on your screen. So being familiar with it is highly useful for preparing yourself for other rotations. Or uh, Now, we move to the end of the year, 2021, on December, with the internal medicine of patient virtual observership at Milburn Medical Center in Milburn, uh, New Jersey. Uh, here I was introduced to a multifaceted uh, experience, which included real-time virtual doctor-patient consultations, exams, and other medical appointments. Here, for the first time, I had the chance to witness how patient care in the outpatient setting carried out in the daily basis. I learned about the medical specialty of internal medicine as it is concerned with the prevention, diagnosis, and treatment of diseases in adult patients. In addition, uh, I was not the only thing I could do during the appointment. I was able to talk to the patient, ask some questions, or take part of the history taking. Uh, we were able to see around uh, 25 to 35 patients per day, uh, which made the days very busy. 
But despite seeing this large quantity of patients per day, uh, there was always time to discuss the clinical case with the physician and to know what the doctor's thought process was. Uh, I will highly recommend this type of experiences to others uh, talking about internal medicine or any other specialty. The quantity of patients is usually high as the variety of scene pathologies too. The physicians are up to date. They answer all of your questions and explain uh, the reasons why in a detailed and evidence-based way. Uh, personally, I had the opportunity to learn more about the diseases commonly seen in internal medicine on the hospital or in the office, uh, which helped me to update and sharpen my knowledge. Now, uh, we change of specialty on July 2022. This has been my last rotation on uh, neurology outpatient virtual observership at Washington, D.C. This experience is a comprehensive neuroscience program that combines neurology, internal medicine, and psychiatry. It is intended to provide U.S. clinical experience for international physicians that are interested in learning American medicine as a preparation for applying for a residency program. One of the unique aspects of this rotation is that you have two physicians guiding you through the whole four weeks. Uh, on the Zoom video meeting, a former psychiatrist, and at the office, you have a neurologist. The rotation is focused on neurology, but having the support of a former psychiatrist is of big impact for a complete understanding for many of the diseases uh, patients present with. Uh, this makes you acquire certain judgment for knowing when the patient may benefit uh, from a psychology or a psychiatry referral. Again, in this rotation, I was able to see patients being attended in the office, uh, talk to them, and be part of the neurological examination. This, uh, despite not being the first time uh, I was able to talk to patients. Uh, this has been one of the most enriching experiences of the rotation because what makes neurology different uh, from other specialties is that you need to localize the lesion. You need to determine where the in conjunction uh, with the time course over which these signs and symptoms have arisen and evolved. And during the time with the patient, you need to obtain clinical history and perform a good neurologic examination in order to determine uh, where the problem is or where the injury is. Uh, this is difficult when you don't have much experience. Fortunately, uh, this rotation, I got the opportunity to have the guide of a highly experienced neurologist uh, who approaches the patient perfectly, uh, taking all the needed time in an old fashioned and very human way that made me, that made the patient and the students feel really comfortable. And despite being a virtual rotation, not being able to physically uh, perform their neurologic examination, uh, it wasn't a limitation for us, the ones who were rotating virtually, uh, because the neurology, the neurologist in the office uh, explained the neurophysiology of every finding in a very clear way. So you uh, weren't missing. By last, I want to mention something in which this rotation is stood over the others. This is the magnitude of US healthcare system learning that this rotation offered me. I want to clarify that all rotations will teach you about how the US healthcare system works indirectly by you getting involved in the activities or directly uh, by someone actively promoting by talking from experience or through lectures. Uh, both of these happened here. Uh, we were witnessing how the healthcare system worked by attending daily, but the psychiatrist we work with was constantly 
providing us with materials that gave us a better understanding about how the US healthcare system works and taught us so many things we have not ever considered before. As what type of medical career we could have in the US in the rural area in a, in a big city, for example, what were the differences between different types of residency programs? Uh, which are the challenges that applicants face at the interviews, malpractice, and many others that gave you a better insight of the challenges you may face during your journey? Uh, now it's time to talk about other benefits you may gain with US clinical experiences. Uh, one of them is the opportunity to earn letters of recommendation. If you are a physician or a student here into the US, at some point of your journey, you will face the need of getting, uh, well, US clinical experience as well as letters of recommendation. You may be wondering uh, what is a letter of recommendation? Well, it is a letter that a physician writes on your behalf, describing you as a student or as a physician. It highlights your skills, your ability, and gives to the reader of this letter an idea of how well you perform during the rotation and how well you might perform in the future as a resident. Uh, so by reading this letter, uh, you get the idea of how good candidate you are for the specialty you want to get into. And how do you earn these letters of recommendation? Usually, as an international medical graduate who is starting on this journey, uh, you don't have contacts in the US. All your clinical experience during the career or during your practice uh, have been done on your home country. So basically, at this point, you don't have the opportunity to, to ask for someone to write you a letter of recommendation, someone who practices actually in the US. And here comes into play the role of clinical rotations, uh, whether virtually or in person, by rotating, by rotating for a period, let's say four weeks, uh, you get involved in the daily activities the physician in charge is doing, uh, being your work and progress supervised by your preceptor and the staff. Four weeks is the most common amount of time rotations last, and it is enough time for your preceptor to get to know you enough for writing a letter of recommendation for you. Uh, but always remember, letters of recommendations are earned. Uh, they are merit-based, and it does not mean that just by passing through the four weeks period, you will get a good letter of recommendation. My advice is try your best, perform the best you can without being afraid to participate. Everyone is aware you are not an expert. That's why you are learning. So ask questions, answer questions when you are asked to. Does not matter if you are wrong, uh, you are learning from it. In that way, you show your interest and your commitment to the specialty. And by doing this, the final product will be a wonderful learning experience for you. And you may get a really good letter of recommendation that describes how well you did. In my experience uh, with the rotations I previously mentioned, I talked to the physicians at some point at the rotation uh, what my plans are. And I ask them if please they could write me a letter of recommendation. Yes. And despite they wrote these letters, I am not able to read them. Why is that? Well, because at some point I will be entering the match process. And because of this reason, they are not able to send you or to give you the letter. The letter will be uploaded to the ERA system, uh, which is the system uh, that streamlines the residency application process. So if that's your case and you are pursuing a career into the US, uh, you won't get to read these letters. Uh, the physician will notify you that she or he wrote it 
and that the file is saved in the computer and it's and it will be ready to be uploaded when whenever you ask for but this is not the only use for these letters uh something that may seem surprising is the fact that not everyone who is getting u.s clinical patients want to get into the residency uh process in the u.s uh, sometimes they want to learn more about the specialty and get to know how things are made on other country, for example, in the US. Uh, sometimes they want to put in practice their current knowledge and sharp their skills for performing better at their home country. And many more are the motivations for doing this. From the four rotations I have been, uh, on two of them, there was at least one physician who wanted to continue his career on its home country and was rotating for getting a better insight of the specialty before applying to the specialty at their home country. On cases like this one, a letter of recommendation from other country may be really helpful for the application process you want to enter. Uh, talks really good of you and your will to enter to the residency the fact that you are doing your best to gain more experience on a language that is not your first language. This was the case of a colleague of mine I met during the first rotation. She asked for a letter of recommendation for applying to residency here at Mexico. And she got this letter sent by email for her to use it uh, when she will be applying for residency. And I am sure it will be really helpful as evidence of her English proficiency, proficiency sorry, and, and it will uh, show her commitment to the specialty. Uh, now, talk about the social aspect of getting U.S. clinical experience. Uh, you will be meeting new people during this journey. Uh, you never stop interacting with others. Some of them will become your mentors or new friends. Uh, the interesting and beautiful part of this is that you don't only engage with your preceptor or the you will be working with. You also share with other students and physicians who will be in most of the cases from all around the world and that share with you common objective. The majority of them, uh, the objective of becoming a this encourages the diversity and enriches you by expanding your cultural knowledge. It's really interesting uh, to learn from other cultures and healthcare systems besides the U.S. one by sharing how is the field of medicine in your country and you will learn how is the field of medicine in other countries. Also, you will notice that not everyone is on the same point of the journey at the same uh, time on the rotation you are taking place of. For example, you may meet students that are currently at the match interview process. Some of them are applying for residency that year or the next one, and others like me uh, that are doing the rotation before even giving step one or step two. This gives you the opportunity to find in others the guidance that is necessary in this path, because not everyone at their university, their city or state have someone who is doing this or who have done this, making it more difficult for that person to find what is the best thing to do to get closer to the final goal. Uh, my advice will be try to connect with others does not matter they are on different points of the journey remember it's not a straight road it's not a straight pathway and we are all on the same boat so meeting new people and trying to help others is always the right thing to do uh, now comes the question when to start uh, this could be when to start getting U.S. clinical experience or when to start the journey to U.S. physicianship. Uh, there is no correct answer, but my answer is as soon as possible. 
as soon as possible, you decide you want to become a physician in the United States, the better for you to start focusing on doing it. Personally, I would have liked uh, for me to start in this process since the early stages of my career. Uh, I, don't, I don't regret it because at the time, I was, at that time I was merely focused on school and I didn't think about doing residency in the US, but I see how useful it could have been to start as soon as possible. It is never too late. Uh, there are those who have built a long and successful career in their countries and decide to do residency in the US, achieving it and getting into highly competitive specialties. So time is not an excuse. However, as international medical graduates, that the year of graduation plays against, plays against us. Uh, some programs prefer international applicants that have graduated not more than three or five years ago. Increases the chances of matching if you have graduated long ago. But this shouldn't be a determinant factor for not following your dream. Same, if you just graduated like me and want to start in this, do not think too much about for years it will take you to complete this. Uh, do it at your own pace and avoid comparisons because no journey is the same. Remember that despite this is a journey for a specific track that, that we are talking about right now. Uh, the journey for being a physician starts by the time you enter to medical school. So focus on being the best physician you can, the best medical student you can, wherever you are. And then think about the requirements you will need to accomplish for whichever the journey is uh, without distracting you from the objective of being the best professional you can, the best physician you can. Finally, I want to thank you for your time. Uh, do not be afraid. Uh, not you, I know you are perfectly capable of accomplish whatever you want. And be grateful to whoever is there for you and has supported you during this journey, since no one does this on their own. Uh, have a good day. Uh, it was a pleasure to be here with you today.